Let's look at two more examples of compound inequalities, three-part inequalities in particular. So these guys really are not that complicated as long as we slow down and pay attention. If I just gave you this inequality right here, and I asked you to solve 2x plus 9 is less than or equal to 81, well, the first thing you, that you would do would be subtract 9 on both sides, right? No big deal. But since you have a three-part inequality, what you do to one part of the inequality, you have to do to all three parts, which means I need to also subtract 9 over here. Please keep in mind your goal. Your goal is to get the variable by itself in the middle. Because once it's by itself, you're going to see what it's in between. It's in between this number and that number, which leads you straight to your number line, which then leads you straight to your interval notation. So those guys go away. We now have 6 is less than 2x, which is less than or equal to 72. And then what's the last step that you would take to get x by itself in the middle? Well, that's just dividing both sides by 2, just like this. So we do this. Notice we're dividing by a positive number, so there's no need to change the direction of the inequality. So this stays as 3 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 36. So x is in between these guys. Now remember what I said in the last video. The flow of the inequalities will always be in the same direction. So either both less than or both greater than. Here, they're both less than. Uh, one is less than or equal to, but still, you know what I mean. So let's go straight to that number line my solutions represented by x are those values that are in between 3 and 36. So it's all of this stuff in the middle. It says less than but not equal to 3, so that's going to stay open. Less than or equal to 36, so that is going to be closed to indicate that we are including that value. And so we write this using interval notation. This goes from 3 to 36 parentheses on the 3 because we're not including that. Since the 36 is a closed point, we're going to put bracket on the 36. And that's it. The math would have been the same no matter what these inequalities were. So if this had just been less than instead of less than or equal to, you would have had less than, less than, open, open, both parentheses, right? Had this one been less than or equal to, they're both less than or equal to, they're both closed, they both get brackets. But the math would still be the same from 3 to 36. Let's take a, take a look at this guy. So the first thing you want to do, uh, besides run away, naturally because there's a fraction, is think, what's the problem? How do we get rid of that problem? So don't look at this as a three-part inequality, just look at it like this. If you had this inequality, What's one of the first things that you would do? Hopefully, the first thing you would do would be to get rid of the 7, get rid of the denominator. And we can do that by multiplying times 7. Now, of course, what I do to one part of the inequality, I have to do to all three parts, like that. So here we end up with negative 84 is less than, by multiplying times 7 in the middle, the 7 reduces with that denominator of 7. I mean, that's the whole point of multiplying times 7. And then we have 4 minus 5x is less than 28. All right. Well, now it's just like the last problem that we did. We've got to go through the steps of getting x by itself, starting with moving any constants that are not directly connected to the variable. So I need to subtract 4 on both sides first. So minus 4 minus 4 everywhere. All right. Now, notice that subtracting 4 is not division. So my inequality symbol is not going to change. Negative 88 is less than negative 5x, which is less than 24. Now, notice here at the very beginning we had negative 12 was less than 4. True. Negative 84 is less than 28. That's true. And negative 88 is less than 24. Still a true statement in terms of the order that we have for the real number line. 
The last step, though, is to get rid of this coefficient of negative 5. So we divide all three parts of the inequality by negative 5. Now, we're dividing by a negative, so that means those inequality symbols are going to change. They're going to flip around. Now, 88 and 5 don't reduce, but you do have negative over negative, so that's a positive. 88 over 5. This now becomes greater than x, which is greater than negative 24 over 5. So with the flipping of the inequality signs, it still has to be true as we read this from left to right. Is positive 88 over 5 greater than negative 24 over 5? Yes, that's still a true statement. Now, some of you may want to rewrite this because you don't like it going from greatest to least. And so you can just change the order here. But you've got to do it the right way. So negative 24 over 5, notice how this inequality symbol is pointing to the negative. So even when you flip it around, it still has to be pointing to that. x, and this is less than 88 over 5. This inequality symbol is opening up to the fraction 88 over 5, just like it's opening up to it right there. When we graph this, we're going from negative 24 over 5 to 88 over 5. So my solution set is going to be everything that's in between these two numbers. But then you have to figure out, are you including those endpoints or not? Well, they're both less than and not equal to. So we don't get to include those endpoints. So we go straight from here to the interval notation. So that's negative 24 over 5 to 88 over 5. And we're not including those endpoints. So we get parentheses on both ends.